today we are going to talk about randomized algorithm but before we do that let's look at a more critical problem if you have heard the news gabbar has caught jay and biru and given the mathematical inclination of gabbar he has proposed a condition for the release of jay and biru so before we talk about randomized algorithm let's see if we can help jay what is the condition gabbar has proposed the following he says that he will put jay and biru into separate rooms and give them two strings x and y x goes to jay let's say and y goes to y biru uh, where x and y are some big strings of 0,1 so remember that they are put in different ways and their only task is to check if x is equal to y or not if they answer correctly then they are released if they do not answer correctly then they are killed the only problem they can't communicate except let's say a small number of bits so say that the strings are very very big uh, x and y are element of 01 to 10000 or something and the communication is restricted to only 10 bits so you see the problem now right they are put into different room once they can't communicate or they can communicate only 10 bits then they are given very very large strings and they need to check if they are equal or not clearly if they could have communicated jay or viru could have transferred the whole string to the other person they would have matched and answered correctly and they would have been released what can they do so at this point before they are put into the respective rooms they can discuss strategy so at this point they can plan ahead of what to do but no x comma y at this point so the problem is clear to you now so they are put into respective rooms where they can only communicate small number of bits but they are given now very very big strings and they have to check if those two strings are equal or not if they answer correctly then they are released otherwise they are killed so pretty soon jay and viru realized that it's not possible to get out for sure whatever they do they cannot make sure that they will definitely be released whatever the study they decide gabbar can potentially give some x and y for which their strategy will fail because the strings are very very big whether they are equal or not they need 10000 bits of communication 10 bits of communication will not suffice but being students of probability they are okay with the randomized they just want to make sure that whatever be x comma y they are released with high probability so with this new goal what do you think do you think that they can they can get released with very very high probability one intuition might be that they had 10000 bits to communicate now they have only 10 bits to communicate so they should be successful only with very very small probability still let's try let's try some ideas if i were you my first idea would be pick a random subset of size 10 and match that set if those two subsets turn out to be equal we will say 
the entire strings are equal. If they don't, then we say that the strings are not equal. So clearly, if x equal to y, then x restricted to the subset. So this is just saying that I am looking only at the 10 bits of x is equal to y subset of uh, y restricted to s and they will be released. But what if x is not equal to y? Knowing that Gubber is a sadist, we can give x and y which are very very close to each other. Say just one bit apart. And you see that our strategy will fail for such an input. So again as an exercise you can convince yourself that our strategy will fail if x and y differ on just one bit. This is also called Hamming distance if you have heard of it. So if x and y have Hamming distance 1, then this is a very very bad strategy. Remember that they want to make sure that because Gubber is evil, whatever be x comma y pair, they should win with high probability. Let's look at another idea and see if this might work. They cannot exchange x and y, but at least when they are together, they can agree on a random string. What is a random string? It's some random string which they pick from 0, 1 to the 10,000. So they pick a long enough, same as the size of x and y, a random string z and they keep with themselves. Both. Z as well as z, they will keep z. Important thing is z is picked randomly. So there are 2 to the 10,000 of these strings. Each of the string is picked uniformly with equal probability when they do it. And what is their protocol? What is their check? They just check after receiving x and y, x transpose z is equal to y transpose. Notice that this requires only one bit of communication because x transpose z as a dot product is only one bit. And then if it is equal, they say x equal to y. If it fails, then they say x not equal to y. Now, what do you think? Is this a good strategy? Again, if x is equal to y, this will definitely make sure that x transpose z is same as y transpose z. So, they are released. This was the easy case. The tricky case is when x is not equal to y. So, we want to find the probability under picking a random z that x transpose z is not equal to y. Remember that the probability is only over the random z. It does not depend on and you want to find out what is this problem. And with some small uh, work, you can actually figure out that uh, this probability is half. So again, this is a small exercise. Uh, my hint would be look at the coordinate where x and y I know that x is not equal to y, so there is at least one bit where they do not agree. So looking at that bit, depending on whether z is 0 or 1, you will see that this is going to be one of the keys. I won't say more, but you can convince yourself that this happens. This seems like a good strategy. If x is equal to y, we get released with probability 1. If x is not equal to y, we get released with probability half. Now you might wonder that we only used one bit of communication. We had 10 bits. Can we increase this probability? And the idea is very simple. Whatever we did, we just repeat it 10 times. That means they would share not one, but 10 random strokes. Again, 
of the pixel. Okay, they can write on a piece of paper if they are very long or something. When they get x and y, then for all i, they will check if x transpose z i is equal to y transpose z i. If all of these succeed, then they claim that x is equal to y. Otherwise, they say that x is sounds good. It seems that now our probability of success should increase. So again, if actually x was equal to y, they will be released. Certainly. Because all these x transpose zi will be equal to y transpose zi. So this is the easy case. If x was not equal to y and zi were picked randomly, then each of these things will be satisfied only with probability half. So all these 10 things are satisfied since they are independent. Again, picking z1, z2, z10 was independent. The first thing, x transpose zi equal to y transpose zi. That ha happens with probability half. x transpose z2 is equal to y transpose z2. So this is x transpose z1 equal to y transpose z1. This is x transpose z2 is equal to y transpose z2. And this is x transpose z10 equal to y transpose z10. So I can multiply these because all these things are independent. And this becomes half to the 10th. So this is a failure probability, which is much, much lower. 1 by 1024. If I was given more goods to communicate, I could decrease this further. So this seems like a successful strategy. And in some sense, this is the first randomized algorithm you might have. So let me define a randomized algorithm more formally. We will only talk about case when the output is 0, 1. This is not hard to assume. You are a computer scientist. You like Boolean values. Let's say that our goal is to output succeed or fail, 0 or 1. And now a randomized algorithm uses some randomness. This is the main difference from a usual algorithm. In a usual algorithm, all steps are fixed. You do this depending on the input, you do the next step and so on. But in this case, at some point of the algorithm, you just pass a coin, some randomness and depending on the random value, depending on the output, you choose what to do. This was clear in the context of the previous algorithm where our randomness was in choosing or picking z. Depending on the z, we calculated x transpose z. So similarly, there can be a general algorithm to calculate some value uh, where we want to output 0, 0,1. It might be a random string to use to decide which way to go and then we answer. The important point is the output does not depend just on x. Okay, so this is something which is very counterintuitive from whatever algorithms we have seen. Generally, the output only depends on x. Here, it will depend upon x and some random bit r, which will be chosen randomly through the execution. So in some execution might give the correct value because the correct arrow, the not the correct arrow was chosen, some execution of the algorithm might give incorrect. And not surprisingly what we need is that probability that our algorithm succeeds is more than some high value. Let's start with 3. So such an algorithm is called a randomized algorithm. Main difference, instead of at every point knowing what we do, at some points we might want to use randomness to decide what to do. That means for some random strings we will get the correct answer, for some random strings we will get the incorrect answer. What we need is 
that for most of the random strings, we get the correct answer. And more importantly, this is a case of confusion for many people, this should happen for all x. That means whatever be the input, for most of the random strings, my algorithm should succeed. So I should correctly write it as probability over the randomness which I am using. Ax is correct. This is more than 3 by 4 for all inputs. This algorithm actually depends on two things. What is the input and what is the random string. And if you have any confusion, look at our algorithm for j you will see that x comma y were the inputs and r was the z which was chosen randomly. Take some time and make sure that you understand this thing. And now our, we are allowed to use randomness and the criteria also is relaxed. We don't need to succeed all the time. We should succeed with high probability. Generally in the case of randomized algorithms, we can divide it into two kind of algorithms, one-sided error and two-sided error. One-sided error is what you saw in the case of J and Viru also. So in this case, if the output should be 1, then we always get 1. Right? So, if x was equal to y, we always got x equal to y in the randomized protocol. So, this was a, this was a one side. If output should be 0, if the ideal output is 0, we get 0 with high probability. So, this is one side. On one side, we always succeed. On the other side, we succeed with high probability. And the example you saw was of the one-sided error. In general, your algorithm will have two-sided error where on both sides, the probability that my algorithm answers correctly is more than some constant. In the case of one-sided error, we saw that if my failure probability was half, I could increase it to 1 by 1 0 2 4 by repetition. Now what about two sided? So again, I have an algorithm which on the randomness succeeds with high probability. And now you might wonder that why I keep taking 3 by 4. This argument will show that 3 by 4 is just some constant. I could have chosen any other thing. So, for example, if I had an algorithm which was giving me the correct answer with probability 2 by 3, is it useless? Or can I do something to increase the probability to 3 by 4? This is the question which is passed down. And this is where we will use the tools we have learned before. Let me tell you the problem again. We have a randomized algorithm two-sided error, success probability is let's say uh, 3 by 4, but we want a randomized algorithm whose success probability is much higher, let's say 1 by 1. So notice that this constant should be greater than half, because otherwise I can just toss a point and I will be correct with probability half. So that does not give me any uh, advantage. So my probability should be half. Let's say it is half plus epsilon, where epsilon is. And now I want to succeed with much, much higher uh, probability. So what can I do? Pause the video, think about it. Can you think of a strategy to reduce the error? I think this strategy actually is pretty natural. Remember that in the case of one-sided error, we repeated it and it worked out. In the case of two-sided error, again, we can repeat the algorithm multiple times. 
So I will get a string 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, something like that. Let's say I am repeating it k times. Then I will get a string of these answers. Should I answer 1 or should I answer 0? And it's not very hard that I should take the majority of the outcomes. So if I have more number of 1s, then I output 1. If I have more number of zeros, then I answer. But can I firmly prove that it is a good strategy? Again, can you think why this is true? The answer in one word or two words is child of all. You remember, we calculated the probability yesterday that if we toss a coin with let's say whose success probability is 0.6. So we have a coin which gives me heads with probability 0.6. And if I toss it 1000 times, then we saw that the number of heads greater than 500, this happens with very, very high probability. And this is exactly the argument here. So if the probability of getting one here or the correct answer here, is half plus epsilon, then getting more than half once when I experiment is repeated k times, this probability, so my normal algorithm I'm calling it akx, so ax repeated k times, this is correct is actually more than 1 minus e to the minus 2 epsilon square k. So this comes from chart. Notice that my probability is going down as e to the minus k. This is going very, very fast. So, with very few repetitions, I get the correct answer. Epsilon is a constant. So, this is given as an assignment to you. So, you can calculate this. It is just phrased in different words. It's the same exercise which you did in the previous lecture. It is just framed in different I have an algorithm which gives me the correct answer with probability half plus epsilon. If I repeat it k times, then I will get the correct answer more than k by 2 times. That probability is 